The Apollo Image Archive is over 8,000 images from the Apollo missions. I probably could have guessed that from the name. These images are just, I mean, they're mind-blowing. I was using my whole lunch hour to just look at these images rather than anything other than that. The Apollo Image Archive was put online in February of 1999 by a guy named Kip Teague. They were images requested from NASA and then put online by him just as a way to say, here, here's everything that we knew about the Apollo program, at least in still image. The reason I bring this up isn't because I want to talk about the Apollo Archive, although it's very cool. They've got magazines, DVDs, books, all sorts of stuff on there. You should definitely check it out. Kip Teague would probably appreciate it. The thing I like most about the Apollo Image Archive isn't just the photos themselves, but what the photos say about the people trapped in that tiny little capsule on their way to the moon. If you go to Apollo 11 magazine 37 slash R, I think, or something like that, you're going to see some blurry, crappy photos. A whole lot of different photos of the same thing over and over and over and over again. This is when Buzz and Neil were actually on the moon. They'd already done their EVA, now they were sitting in the LEM, hanging out, and they were taking pictures of the lunar landscape. They'd even put the flag up already. You can see it in the pictures. Whoever was holding the camera, I don't know if it was Buzz or Neil, let's just assume for fun that it was Neil, right? So Neil is taking a picture of the American flag out the window of the LEM. In the foreground, there's the RCS systems, I think they are. Either way, they're little thrusters to help the LEM kind of figure its way down to the ground. There's the flag in the middle ground, and in the distance is just black sky and moonscape. Now that picture itself is pretty awesome, but the best part about it, for me anyway, is what happens next. A lot of people out there think we faked the moon landing. This, for me, this, what I'm about to explain, this is one of those ways that you know it was real. See, film school teaches you mise en scene. You're trying to put everything together. It's everything that comprises your scene, like a photograph or a postcard. Filmmakers do this all the time, mostly without you noticing it. Hitchcock was really good at it, Kubrick was really good at it, and supposedly he's the person who was shooting this fake to moon landing. So why wouldn't he do it here? Because what happens next is Neil, assuming he's holding the camera, takes a picture, winds the camera, moves over a little bit, and takes another picture and then winds the camera, and then moves over a little bit, and takes another picture, and then winds the camera, and moves over, and takes another picture, and winds the camera, and moves over, and takes another picture, and winds the camera, and moves over, and takes another picture, takes another picture, takes another picture. No professional filmmaker would ever do that, because they would find the perfect mise-en-scene to capture everything that they wanted to see. Now, Neil, he was looking out at this beautiful view on the moon, and he saw the American flag off to his right, and off to the left he saw this beautiful cut shadow of the lem from the sun just sitting there on the ground. And rather than try and find a way to fit them both into the frame, he did what every iPhone user today does, took a panoramic image. He starts with the RCS, an old glory, and a moonscape, and he moves over throughout the moon, showing us, the audience, what he sees. If you want to find it, go to AS11-37-5481, and this is a panoramic, so it kind of has a few different pictures to it, and that goes to 5487. It's a beautiful way to put humans on the moon. Not what a filmmaker would want you to see, but everything that Neil thought was cool and important. If you haven't looked at them, go look at them. I don't know why you wouldn't go look at them. There's a link in the description. Also, you can go to Flickr and look up this username. These images are unedited, unadulterated. They have, they're out of focus, they're blurry. They're all crazy, but they are a beautiful glimpse into what life was like for these men who were going to the moon from Apollo 7 all the way through the end of the Apollo program. Sometimes what you're looking at is just so vast, so beautiful, so incredible that you can't capture it in one picture, one perfect shot. Instead, you have to sweep the camera around like you would with your eyes and capture all of these things. Because of this, we know that men were on the moon that day. Amateur photographers, professional astronauts on the moon. It's so cool. Check out the archive. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Find me on Twitter, at Trace Dominguez. Let's talk some science. Keep on learning, everybody, and I'll see you later. Thanks for tuning into my channel. I really appreciate it.